from a secret location. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, you kill him? He ain't even doing nothing. It's all about Kobe Brown. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. And I've got the latest from that liberal rag. The Wall Street Journal. <laughs> Here it is. This just in. Democratic Senator Barack Obama has opened up a double-digit lead in the U.S. presidential race. With a growing number of voters saying they are comfortable with his values, background, and ability to serve as commander-in-chief, this according to a new Wall Street Journal NBC News poll. The poll finds that his Republican rival, Senator John McCain, still holds the edge on experience. And most voters remain convinced that he is better prepared for the White House than Senator Obama is. But that argument is undercut by concerns about the readiness of his running mate, Alaska Governor Sarah Palin, whose popularity has faded. The poll found that 52% of voters favor Senator Obama, compared with 42% for Senator McCain, up from a six-point Obama edge two weeks ago. The survey conducted from Friday to Monday has a margin of error of plus or minus 2.9 percentage points. What does that mean? Well, take off three points for Obama, add three points for McCain, You'd still have 49-45, and Obama would still be in the lead, and that would be that. Says here the 10-point lead is the largest in the journal NBC poll since both men claim their party's nominations and represents a steady climb for Senator Obama since early September when the political conventions concluded with the candidates in a statistical tie. Peter D. Hart a Democratic pollster who conducts the poll with Republican Neil Newhouse, said voters have reached a comfort level with Barack Obama. The doubts and question marks have been erased. Now get this. Senator Obama has eaten into traditional Republican advantages, running even, for instance, with Senator McCain on taxes. The Illinois senator is <laughs> taxes. Obama said he's going to raise taxes. And he has pulled even with Senator McCain on tax policy. Says here, the Illinois senator has gained ground with several voter groups. He leads suburban voters by 12 percentage points, up from two points two weeks ago. He leads among voters older than 65 by nine points, erasing a one-point McCain advantage in the previous poll. And in the Midwest, this is where the good old-fashioned American values exist, according to Sarah Palin. In the Midwest, Barack Obama is now favored by 25 points, up from a one-point advantage. Senator Obama now holds a 12-percentage-point advantage with independents, a group both sides have fiercely sought. Two weeks ago, Senator Obama led this group by four percentage points. At the same time, 11% of Republicans say they support Senator Obama, whereas 7% of Democrats are backing Senator McCain. Mr. Newhouse said the movement is all toward Obama. He's clearly got the wind at his back. In a year when the electorate yearns for change, the race has long been about... Less about Senator McCain, a familiar and respected figure. And more about Senator Obama and whether he could pass a threshold test with voters. In July, 47% of voters said that Senator Obama had a background and set of values they could identify with. That figure has slowly risen. In the current poll, 55% said they could identify with Senator Obama. That is two points shy of the figure for Senator McCain. And 48% of voters now say 
they would have a great deal or quite a bit of confidence in Senator Obama as commander-in-chief. That is only two points shy of Senator McCain's standing. It isn't that voters have turned against Senator McCain. 44% of voters see him in a positive light, about the same as the previous poll. But Senator Obama's numbers have strengthened, with 56% now reporting very or somewhat positive feelings about him. Similarly, 51% now say the same about his running mate, Senator Joe Biden, up from 43% two weeks ago. Listen to this. The one candidate whose popularity has fallen is Governor Palin, the Republican vice presidential nominee. Voters are less likely to see her in a positive light and much more likely to report negative feelings. 55% of voters say Governor Palin is not qualified to be president if the need arises up from 50% two weeks ago. And when given a list of possible concerns about Senator McCain, voters were by far most likely to say they worry about Governor Palin's qualification to be president. The concern about Governor Palin may also be reflected in the enthusiasm gap between the candidates, which appeared to be closing after the conventions, but has widened again. Four in ten McCain voters call him the lesser of two evils. <laughs> wow. Only 14% of Obama voters feel the same way. 26% of McCain voters say they are excited about their vote. Twice as many Obama voters feel excited. Some daily tracking polls have found a tighter race between Senators McCain and Obama, but the journal's margin is consistent with most national polls, including one released Tuesday by the Pew Research Center for the People in the Press, which found a 14-point advantage for Senator Obama among registered voters. I told you a week ago that McCain is toast. Toast! Our telephone number is 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Jesse on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dan. How's it going? Doing great, son. I was wondering if I can get some uh, follow the advice on the upcoming election and uh, how it's going to affect the stock market. Well, that's anybody's guess. Uh, generally, the opinion on Wall Street is that the stock market has nowhere to go but up at this point. Yeah, well, my question has to do with, um, I'm actually new to the stock market, but I've noticed how in the uh, debates how Obama's talking about bringing the jobs here and the automakers here and new energies such as solar and wind. And I noticed how GM stock and Ford stock has dropped a lot, and I was wondering if that would be a good spot to start putting some money into and possibly some other energies such as wind or solar power. Well, first of all, I don't recommend that somebody without experience investing invest in individual stocks. Okay. Because uh, any individual company uh, could uh, fall by the wayside and you just don't know which companies those are going to be unless you know how to do the research and you are experienced. Okay. So my recommendation to you is if you believe in a certain sector like energy, that you find a good mutual fund that invests in energy. And there are uh, mutual funds uh, that uh, are energy-focused, some of which are focused on oil and natural gas companies, more traditional forms of energy. Some of them are more focused on uh, new forms of energy, uh, such as solar, wind, etc. All right. But you are better off doing that because, uh, really, do you have the experience to know which energy companies are good and which ones aren't? I don't, sir. I do not. That's why I was calling you. I'm just... uh, just Yes, but I noticed it's fun. Well, I know the election once it's over, and once things and once Obama does win and things start changing, I have a feeling it's going to go up, and I'm going to look back and wish I would have yes. put money in now. You need to do your research and find a mutual fund that invests in companies that are in alternative forms of energy. If right. that's what if that's what you believe is going to go up. Okay, what but do you don't about- don't put all your eggs in one basket and bet on one company. Okay. All right. And what do you think also about the uh, a mutual fund that has to do with American automakers? I don't think there's a mutual fund specifically for American automakers. So let's face it, there's only three of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, so, so then, uh, so can I start with an individual stock with one of those, such as GM? Well, let, well, let me let me go a step further. One of the three is now privately owned. You can't even buy stock in Chrysler. Oh. Because it is now privately owned by a uh, a, 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 a private equity company. Hmm. 
All right. So uh, what would you, you – my best bet you're saying then start with the mutual fund and – put the diverse the money in, in that way. Yes, and if I were you, I would start with the minimum amount required to open the account and then to do dollar cost averaging, meaning pick an amount, $50, $100, whatever, pick an amount and put that same amount in every month. All right, dollar cost. That's called dollar cost. What was that again? Dollar cost averaging. Dollar cost averaging. The okay. idea is that in months when the stock market goes down, you'll get more shares for less cost. And in months when the stock market goes up, you'll be paying, you'll be buying less shares at the higher cost. Okay, okay. It is a well recognized form of investing. Um, and in fact, if you uh, go to the internet and look up dollar cost averaging, uh, you'll see many articles about it. Awesome. All right, and you, uh, do you think this is a good time to put money in, even though it's a scary time for the stock market? Do you think it's a good uh, what time? I'm, what I'm telling you is the stock market is not a casino. Yeah. You do not pick the time that it's good to get in. You are in whether it's up or down. All right. Yeah, so you must erase that mentality that you have to fly to Vegas and bet the red and the black. Yeah, that, well, that, that's my mentality. I actually am going to Vegas next month. Well, but you, you got to remember, son, uh, this is not uh, gambling. I, I know. I, I want to make sure I start it now while I'm young. I All mean, right, Dennis, I well, mean uh, keep in mind, the stock market could easily drop another 20% from here. Yes, I And that means that you don't want to put all your money in now. All right. Well, I'm going to start with a little, little bit of money and do that dollar cost averaging, like you're saying, and start with a mutual fund low and just see what happens and learn. It made me rich, Jesse. All right. Well, thanks, Dad, for everything, and uh, keep doing what you're doing. I'm loving your show, and you've taught me a lot. Son, I thank you very much for the call. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Now with the shortest commercial breaks we've ever had. Wow. 1-800-5800-TOM. Is our telephone number. It's Steve listening to our online stream in Biloxi, Mississippi on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to figure this out. Obama's tax plan, raising capital gains taxes on businesses that make 250000 or more. How is this supposed to create jobs? Well, let's start with this. Uh, have you seen the stock market lately? Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Because no, no, no. We'll get to that now because I'm, I'm the host of the show, and uh, I, I'll decide how this goes. Uh, have, you seen, have you seen the stock market? Yes, I have, and I also know this. The Democrats have been in power for the last two years when all this started going down, and they're the reason oh. for Fannie Mac, Freddie, Freddie Mae, and all I Freddie see. Mac and Fannie Mae and all I that. See. Did they the president uh, did the president veto any legislation involving Freddie Mae or uh, Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae? Uh, did the president veto any legislation uh, involving that? McCain tried to put in legislation to put a watchdog on it, and they shot it did, down. Did the president veto any legislation? The, John McCain is not the president. Mm -hmm. Did the president introduce legislation that would have fixed the problem? John McCain is not the president. Again, the president. The president is. We're not talking about the president of the John United McCain is John McCain is just the continuation of George Bush. Well, see, that's it's what the you're same. Wrong. The guy John voted. McCain's the guy voted. The guy voted. The guy voted with Bush ninety percent of the time. He is Bush. No, he's not Bush. Yes, he he's is. He's gotten so much hot water from the Republicans from trying to rebuck oh, things solid. that they're trying to do. It's unreal. As a matter of fact, he voted with he Bush ninety percent of the time. That's <laughs> that. Kerry was wanting him to be his vice president nominee. Again, he voted with Bush 90% of the time. And um, and Obama's voted very liberal, 96%. That's not the point. The point is people want a change, and they don't want Bush, and McCain voted with Bush 90% of the time. Would you please answer the question? And that is, that is, why, uh, that is why McCain's going to lose. The latest poll shows it.
No, in the latest polls, I don't listen to NBC polls because they're so far left, it's unreal. First oh, of and, all. and well, how about the Wall Street Journal? Are they a left-wing publication, too? The New too? York Times. I'm asking about the Wall Street Journal. That's the poll I just read. Is the Wall Street Journal... That ain't funny. Is the, Walls, is the Wall Street Journal a liberal rack, yes or no? The Wall Street Journal? Yeah. I couldn't tell you. Uh, well, you couldn't tell me. What? what would, let me ask you a question. If it's the Wall Street Journal, what would you, so you never like Sarah Palin? You probably never read the Wall Street Journal, Wait right? Sarah Palin. Is right. First of all, how is am Obama I, more? Am I right? More, I like more Sarah more. Palin. You've never read the Wall Street Journal, right? No, I haven't. There we go. And may I ask why not? Because I don't fool with stocks. Because why? I don't make enough to fool with stocks. I see. Uh, you don't make enough money. Uh, I got. I, I I do what I got to do to get out, keep a roof over our head and food in our belly. So why in the world are you concerned about capital gains taxes? Because I'm concerned about my job. Well, because perhaps perhaps taxes, like perhaps later. reading the Wall Street Journal would be a good place to learn about stuff like that. Okay, but if you're gonna ask me a question, let me give an answer. I I, I, I asked you a question. If if if. They raise capital gains taxes on them businesses. These people ain't stupid. These people didn't get this money and get to these points in their lives being stupid. Okay? To take it, to get that money back, they're going to lay people off, which could cost me my job. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, don't you think then reading the Wall Street Journal will be a smart thing to do? Uh, what's the Wall Street Journal going to do for my job whenever they start laying people well, off? Well, keep in mind, if they are laying people off, you'd probably hear about it first in the Wall Street Journal. Let's start with that. And let's take the name of the newspaper, the Wall Street Journal. What do you think the political leaning of a paper called the Wall Street Journal might be? I don't really care. I'm asking, don't be intellectually dishonest with me. You know very well what the political leaning is likely to be, don't you? Uh, I'm going to tell you the honest truth, I don't. So you don't think it would be pro-business? I have never read the Wall Street Journal. I'm asking you if the primary audience of the paper is business. The primary audience of the paper is high net worth individuals. If the name of the newspaper is the Wall Street Journal, don't you think the likely editorial direction of the paper is conservative? Uh, I would think it would be business. And therefore conservative. Um, if it was conservative, I couldn't tell you one way or another. I'd be guessing. It's the Wall Street Journal. It is not the AFL-CIO Journal. It's the Wall Street Journal. I understand. And to answer that question would be guessing, and I'm not, I'm not a guess. Oh, I see. But you'll guess about anything else, just not no, that. Well, no, let it, no since I've read that. the Wall Street Journal for more than 25 years, let me tell you that the Wall Street Journal is a conservative newspaper with a conservative editorial page and a conservative op-ed page. And it was the Wall Street Journal NBC News poll. The Wall Street Journal NBC poll. That okay, is first correct. of all, polls. You keep throwing these polls at me. Right. I don't care about the polls. The polls have okay, accurate. By the way, to, by the way, this. by the way, the polls have accurately predicted who the president will be in every election since 1950. Are you aware of that? That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So, so when Great you say you don't care about I polls, again, again, team, like Sarah Palin and the people who follow her, you are celebrating ignorance. If you want to know who's likely to win, ignorance? read the polls. First of yes, all, you are. I'm a 49-year-old yes, man, veteran of the United States Navy, and Doesn't I'm a mean you're not in the company I work in. Doesn't okay, mean you're I'm not, not ignorant. ignorant. I watch this not. night and day. Okay, second of all, I speak But you would never read the Wall Street Journal, because what do you need to read that for? I speak as a veteran of the United States of America. Navy. There are many veterans, and they're not all conservative, Steve. Uh, I understand, and there are some that's not, but I guarantee you the majority of them are. Okay? So what? First so of what? all, I don't, I, and me leaning towards McCain has nothing to do with his service. It's got to do by the with way, his By past. the way, there's a preponderance of people of color in the military. Are you telling me the black and Latino members of the military are primarily conservatives? Are you telling me all black and Latino members are... Uh, That's not what left? I said. I'm asking if you think the preponderance of blacks and Latinos in the military are conservatives. I think it's uh, probably... It might be about a 60-40. 60-40. 40% of the blacks and Hispanics in the military are political conservatives. Is that what you said? I would say 60-40. Now, which way it goes, I don't know. What do you mean, which way it goes? Well, it could be 60 uh, left or 60 right.
Mm-hmm. Hang on uh, a second there, about Steve. It's a 60 40 ratio. Right. Let me get Ed in here. Ed, what did you want to say to Steve? Hey, uh, Tom, man, I, you know, I just caught to say, man, take it easy on uh, Cletus over there. I think you're giving him a headache, man. I, uh, I don't think uh, he knows what the Wall Street Journal is. and uh, Is that what y'all resort you know, to? <laughs> Cletus over there, I think, you know, he's a little confused, man. You I, sound more like Cletus than I, I reckon, do. I reckon, man, yeah, he reads the newspaper over there. Maybe he'll... Can you read over Explain there, Cletus? Explain to me this. How many answers does he have? I just, I just have a question. Can you read? I can read better than you, probably. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Tom, yeah, I don't yeah. think, uh, Y'all ain't you know, this jokes. guy I mean, uh, knows uh, what, what he's talking about, man. I don't think he knows what the Wall Street Journal is, and I think he was confused when you were asking him what the impact would I, be. I admit it to the Wall Street Journal. I don't I think he, uh, he understood the question. I don't Do you think he understand understood English? the question, bro. I, I think mean, we've. So I think never read it. Well, y'all I've, don't resort to his name calling and stuff. <laughs> when I'm trying to talk facts and uh, points, and y'all just want to resort to uh, belittling and name calling. No, I, I, I think we've reached a stalemate here, boys. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. The latest poll says Barack Obama has a 10-point lead, including a 25-point lead in the Midwest. <laughs> so, um, you know, you can call in here with all the good old boy stuff you want. You know who's going to win. It's Barack Obama. Bottom line, end of story, done deal. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay. All right. Where do I begin here? First of all, uh, th- this has nothing to do with Obama being a transformative figure or anything like that. The only reason he's up in the polls, McCain was up in every poll three weeks ago, and you know that, and then this economy thing hit, and now Obama's up in the polls uh, because uh, the economy thing hit and, and people perceive Democrats and independents, uh, Democrats to be better on the economy, and I've, I have no idea why. But despite it's not that the, they perceive Democrats to be better on the economy. Uh, this is very similar to something that happened in 1994 when Republicans took over Congress after Bill and Hillary Clinton entered the White House and tried to impose national health care on Americans. Americans got fed up and voted in Republicans. It's the same thing. The economy stinks. It's on the Republicans watch and therefore they're getting kicked out. Right. No, I, I completely agree with you. What, what I disagree with is that Obama is some transformative figure who's going to go in there and, and change things. He's not going to change anything. He's, he's voted with his party, Tom, as you know, 97% of the time. You complain about McCain's 90 That's okay. I don't have a problem with him voting with the Democrats okay, okay, 97% of the time. Who, he's a, he's who, a Democrat. But he's, he's saying change, change, change. What's he going to change? He's not well, going to Again, reach the for the most aisle. of the last eight years, we have had Republican decisions, Republican Supreme Court nominees confirmed, uh, Republican everything. We've had uh, no regulation of anything, uh, oil companies and banks running free. Uh, uh, we've had uh, private uh, corporations doing whatever they want. Uh, we've had Enron. We, you name it. Uh, people are, are losing their jobs. Their jobs have been outsourced. And people are fed up. Well, first of all, first of all, that's the free market, uh, Thomas. If no, 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 but to... no, you, you know what? The, uh, that free market argument I would have bought until your free market president demanded that uh, we approve a seven hundred billion dollar welfare payment to American banks. That's okay, not well, free market. Yeah. That's that is that is socialism. Let's your president, fair, Tom, your well, president well, is your president is a socialist. He is not a free market economist. And I want to tell you something else. You don't know who you're talking to here. I'm a fiscal fiscal conservative i am a fiscal conservative not a liberal okay. i am i am opposed uh to big spending by the government your president the conservative demanded that we approve 700 billion dollars to be given carte blanche to banks and mortgage companies the people who got us into this situation in the first place that's what that you do not have the right to use the phrase free market and the republican party in the same sentence anymore well, signed that bill, Tom. Did Barack sign that bill? 
Doesn't matter. What do you mean it doesn't matter? He's again, to too. again, the tools. point They're is, it is, it is the Republicans and it is George Bush who have said the government must cut spending. Right. And we must get the government out of business, out of the backs, off the backs of business. It's giving them $700 billion is counter to what he said. They're, they're all for it, Tom. They all signed it. And you as a fiscal conservative. It doesn't matter. Uh, by the way, I, I am, uh, by the way, I am opposed to the bailout. I'm opposed. Even oh, though Barack, even though Barack Obama voted for it, I'm opposed to it. Right, but they're all they're all the same, Tom. They all signed it. Barack Obama's not going to change no. anything. He's going to go in there and make yes, things, things are, are going to change. Yes, things, things are going to change because there's going to be there's going to be regulations now against the banks, against the subprime mortgage lenders. There's going to be changes of all kinds, and you're not going to like them. They're, they're, all he's going to change, Tom, is increase taxes. Oh, he's going to which, by the way, we need to do. We need to raise taxes. We need to raise taxes. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We are four hundred plus billion dollars uh, in the red every year in this country. Every year, every year, we have tripled the national debt in ten years. You uh, either have cutting spending, Tom. How about how about cutting spending in two thousand one, two thousand two, two thousand three, two thousand four, two thousand five, two thousand six? Where was the spending? The spending was going through the roof back then. And where were your conservatives at that time? Building bridges to nowhere. That's what they were, you moron. Goodbye. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Lisa on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Um, I have a comment about the other caller who called. John McCain is not for veterans. He voted against the GI Bill. If you go on um, Army's Time, I think, or Veterans for Truth, he voted against um, the GI Bill ten times. And he also voted, um, he also got a B, I think, in um with uh, with his proposal for the veteran. So I don't know, like, just because he went, he served his country doesn't make him a veteran. He voted against the veterans. That's why a lot of veterans are very upset towards John McCain. That's why he's not getting a lot of veterans' endorsements. He's also but, getting and not getting a lot of veteran endorsements because Americans, including people who've been to Iraq, are fed up with the Iraq war. Anybody, uh, just about everybody in this country has someone in the family or in the extended family who's been to Iraq. I do, too. The people who've been to Iraq are tired of it. They don't understand why we're there. In addition to the average, you know, pot-smoking slacker doesn't understand why we're there. Really, the vast majority of Americans don't understand why we're there. End of story. 1-800-5800-TOB. That's our telephone number. It's Ann on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, hi, Tom. Hey, hi. I just wanted to give you um, my opinion on why I think uh, McCain is going to win, even the polls show differently. I'm listening. Um, because I think there's a lot of people out there like me that, you know, when they first would tell people they were voting for McCain, that Obama supporters are so vocal and so in your face. But like me, I've just given in. Now, so wait, so explain this. So wait, wait, wait. No, no, you wait a minute. You wait a minute. Explain this poll from the Wall Street Journal. Explain it to me, please. Explain how the Wall Street Journal says Obama has a ten point lead. Tell people I'm voting for Obama. So mark my words. When the day comes, remember me. No, I'll remember you, darling. Uh, And I know, by the way, when Obama wins, you'll never, ever call back. You'll be hiding under the bed. You remember this phone call? Oh, don't worry. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Let's let's on. see. Let's see you put your money where your mouth is, sweetheart. Why don't you leave your full name and your phone number with Dino? And then the day after election day, we'll call you back for your reaction. How about that? He's not my full name and full phone number cuz he's got caller ID. Right. I, no, no, so. no, no, no. You're you know, you're going to give it to him. You're going to tell him your phone number. Put and he's got to he's got to verify it. We're going to play this tape back, and you're going to have to listen to it. I'm bringing it on. You hang on there, darling. It's amazing. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Jeremy on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hey Tom, love your show. Um, Thank you. You know, all, all these people that are calling in saying that McCain is going to win are, are missing the point that a lot of conservatives are jumping ship. 
um, not just Colin Powell, but William F. Buckley's son, who was a writer for the National Review, arguably the most um, Republican publication in the world, has said that he's going to vote for Democrat for the first time in his life. So you can't say that uh, that you know that that. Uh, McCain is going to surprise people and win. He's not. Even Republicans are jumping ship on this one. Colin Powell is voting for Obama. And William F. Buckley, William F. Buckley coined the phrase liberal pinhead. And his son is a writer for his magazine, and he's not voting Republican. Right. It's it's lunacy. And, and you know, just some background, I, I voted Republican once. Um, for George Bush the first time, I was stupid. I didn't know what I was doing. I damn sure didn't vote for him the second time. You're making good points, Jeremy. What can I say? William on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Mr. Likas. How are you yes. today? Doing great. Good, good. Well, I'd like to comment about some of these people who are saying that there's unpatriotic people in this country. They're really chapping my backside. My family has been involved in the military going way back. We're back to Civil War and had people fighting in this country before most people's family came over on the Mayflower. If there's somebody who wants to say that my family or people in this country are unpatriotic, I'll tell them where I'm sitting. I'll give them the color of the semi I'm sitting in. They can come over here, and I'll stomp a mud hole in them. I, you know what? I'd pay to see that. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Thank you for tuning in. Shorter commercial breaks. Moving it along faster than ever. There's nothing like it. The new Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Barack Obama now with a 10-point lead in the latest poll from the Wall Street Journal and NBC News. Let's say hello here to Roy on the Tom Likas Show. Tom, my man, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Hey, you know, I heard a gentleman earlier talking about how the polls uh, was, you know, the reason why uh, Obama jumped ahead in the polls was because of the fact that uh, the economy and, and everything, the disaster with the economy, but... People fail to realize that before then, the Republican National Convention is a historical fact that the Republicans' uh, nominees members are going to rise because, I mean, you're rallying all your troops. And so the people's got a, a false hope with that. You know, the Republicans got a false hope with those numbers rising right after, after the convention when it's a historical fact that it happens that way. And Obama has been doing a steady climb, and, and people fail to realize that they're not looking at the facts. Obama's talking about change. He's talking about what he's going to do to stop this war. He's talking about what he's going to do to get these veterans the education, everything they need when they leave the military. McCain voted against all the GI Bill and all that. He, and, and to be Tom, the Republicans don't want to face the facts, and they're looking at trying. They, they, they think they, they're insulting their fellow Republicans intelligence by bringing Sarah Palin into this campaign. But what do you well, think about that, Tom? I, well, I, I think you're right about that. The Republicans are clearly scared. They're not used to losing. And uh, over the years, the Democrats have uh, become experts at losing, including losing elections. They, they really should have won by all rights. Uh, they've been experts at losing. So the Republicans have kind of gotten used to, lose, to winning and to seeing the Democrats lose. And, and another thing is they're used to uh, pulling some numbers here and there to get people in the office. I mean, you know, we could bring up old things, but we're not going to do that. But my thing is they are insulting Americans' intelligence by nominating this woman into possibly being a vice president and, as we say, a heartbeat away from the presidency. I mean, there are so many other people that are qualified for this job. And, you know... It, to me, I've been hearing all this stuff about she's not even getting the respect of her fellow Republicans. You know, they, they, they say that she's walking around like a secretary around there waiting for orders on what to do next. And that's sad. Good points. Thanks a lot for the call, Roy. I appreciate it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Leilani on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. 
Hello. <laughs> Hello. Well, I just wanted to say that um, I think that the reason why John McCain chose Sarah Palin for his VP is because he felt that he was going to lose regardless, so he needed something to jumpstart it. And so since everybody was so caught up in um, a black man being, you know, a historic event of a black man, you know, becoming president, he needed to do something as well. So he decided, why don't I make a historic event and put a woman on, a woman on the ticket? But there's nothing they, historic about it. Do you know that uh, uh, we had a woman run for vice president already? Right. No, but I'm saying, well, because... We know that because we know our history, but there's a lot of people who don't know history. So they see it as a, you know, like this is an event. Wait a minute. What, 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 why do you think people don't know that a woman has already run for vice president? Because most people I mean, don't even know a lot of things. I mean, they don't even know the reason why, uh, you know, some of the policies, some of McCain's policies. Do you, you know, know, do you know the name of the woman who ran for vice president? I'm sorry. Can you say that again? Do you know the name of the woman who ran for vice president? <laughs> Another edition of Chicks on Politics. Amazing. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Joey on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tommy? Joey? Tommy! Joey! Hey, brother, thank you so much for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. I've, I've sure. had some great conversations with you in the past. I think the first time I talked with you was when you were I had callers call in who had seen the 9-11, the Fahrenheit 9-11 movie. Yeah. And uh, I think it's Fahrenheit 1021 now. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and Tommy, I wanted to ask you about, I was, I was reading about Joe Biden's, uh, I think it's the biggest gaffe, uh, to be honest with you in the uh, Obama campaign. I'm voting for Obama nonetheless, but uh, I think uh, Joe Biden is known for having a big mouth, and he said something that I think really scared a lot of people about uh, Obama's inexperience and how that might uh, trigger uh, uh, an international crisis, and everybody's comparing it to uh, uh, John F. Kennedy and the, the, Cuban, the Russian and the Cuban Missile Crisis and everything. What do you think about that? Well, uh, first of all, he did not say an international crisis. He said that he believed that Barack Obama's medal would be tested in the first four months or so of his presidency, and that it would not be like uh, John F. Kennedy. It would be even faster than, than Kennedy was tested. Uh, it wasn't necessary to say that, but I also believe that what he said is probably true. It, it is, but but the thing, the scary thing is that he was he was saying he said, "Mark my words twice," and he said, "I guarantee you." Within the first six months of, of, Obama, of Obama being in office, we're going to have an international crisis because of his inexperience or whatever. And I think he, he alluded to that. And that was really scary. I mean, you know, you know, there's been a lot of gaps in the, in the McCain campaign. But I was really hoping, you know, with such little time left in, in the Obama campaign, that there wouldn't be any major gaps. And I think that, I mean, more than... Uh, than I, I agree with you. I don't think it was necessary to say that. Yeah. Uh, but by the same token, um, I have a very hard time getting upset at someone for telling the truth. You know, I'm so tired of politicians lying to us. I really believe that what he said is true. That's true. But I, I don't think that people are ready for that. You know, I, the Obama campaign has been so positive lately, and that's what's really, you know, uh, uh, attracted so many voters and independents. Uh, and and uh, and McCain has been so negative, and that's what people is turning a lot of people off. And then Joe Biden comes out while Obama's you know visiting his grandmother and says, you know, I, I guess he didn't know he was being recorded, but I mean, he said some really scary things. You know, I mean, it's possible well, he didn't that say that happen. much. I, is it possible that it will happen? Of course, it is. Yeah, By it the is. way, do you disagree with that? I don't. No, I don't. I don't disagree because it could be happen. It could happen whether McCain's in there or whoever's in there. But I mean, for him to guarantee that within the first six months, I mean, that's that's pretty scary. This is a person who has more foreign policy experience than uh, than Palin, uh, who people look up to and who people feel more comfortable voting for Obama because he has Joe Biden on his side. And then Joe Biden comes out and says something like this. I think I think that was uh, the biggest gap. Well, we all knew we all knew that Biden uh, has a big mouth and can't shut up. <laughs> and we all knew he'd say something. At least he said something that was true. Yeah. And uh, you know his biggest crime was telling the truth. And uh, you can't fault somebody for telling the truth. 
So you don't think that, that I mean, McCain and Palin are already pouncing on this. Do you think that that's going to make a big dent? It doesn't in make any difference. Uh, it, uh, you know what? Uh, people are mostly convinced that uh, all Palin pounces on is uh, aroused males. So uh, I don't think we... <laughs> I don't think we have anything to be concerned about in that regard. I, I mean, Sarah, so, it came out today that Sarah Palin has been using uh, taxpayer money in Alaska to fly her daughters to junkets in places like New York and Philadelphia. I know. I heard, I heard you talking about that. I think that, you know, hopefully when they lose, I mean, McCain is not, I don't think, um, there's a, I think there's a woman running for um, uh, senator of, of uh, she's going to be running up against uh, McCain in, in Arizona when he goes back when he goes when he when his tail is between his legs in Arizona. And no, I think, no, no, no. There's a woman governor now, Janet Napolitano. I imagine that's who we're talking about. Yeah, and then when Palin goes back to Alaska, I mean, she's got all kinds of scandals and all kinds of things she has to. And by the way, for. McCain is still the senator. Uh, he's still a U.S. senator. Yes. And he will be even after losing to Obama. Well, you know, I'm 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 going for Obama all the way, Tommy, and I hope that he wins. I hope the change, you know, really happens. I want to give a shout out to my girl, or Christina. I love her very much. And I, Tommy, can you please take me out, Kobe style, with a cheat, with a sweet cheetah in the end? I well, uh, I think I, we have a cougar at the end. Is what we have for you. Here you go. Oh, oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Mike has used his iPhone to hear our show live at San Jose off the Tom Like his show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? Doing great. All right. Well, you know, I've been listening on my iPhone uh, since they took you off radio here in San Jose for a while for some stupid reason. But uh, I've been listening. Uh, you know, I would say for the last few weeks to the topics regarding this and. Uh, it, I even got my girlfriend to listen to it, and it just amazes me how so many people just are uninformed. I mean, well, it amazes me too, but that's what keeps me in business, pal. Thanks a lot for the call. It's the Tom Likas Show.